is it thanks to Ger and Jim. There is the group table. Iran sitting top of the table. Portugal and Spain with one apiece. Next it's Portugal, Morocco and Spain, Iran on Wednesday. Uh, Ronaldo did double his World Cup goals tally. He's now got six after the 51st hat-trick of his career. Liam, where do you start talking about a game like that? Well, it was the most marvellous game, Dara. Uh, Spain had to come back twice. They went behind just at half-time and you worried for them, but they were absolutely magnificent in the second half. Uh, the football they played was sublime, uh, magic. Uh, they got a goal from a set-piece, uh, which they showed themselves to be very adept at. Uh, and then uh, Nacho redeemed himself for the penalty he gave away in the first half with a most marvellous strike. And the way they controlled the game after that, you thought that was it. But when this guy's in the team, in the opposition team, and you get a free kick with two minutes to go, and you see the concentration on his face, you just had a feeling that he was going to get the hat-trick, didn't you? He's the most marvellous player. What a game of football, you know. Pity it wasn't the final. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be. You never know later on. Um, Keith, you, the, the, all the stuff about the Spanish kind of the mentality and it was tested at half time and De Gea and all that stuff but you know um, it just what a match what's a match I, I, th I think they asked the questions they've come back they, sh they showed the character the performance in the second half went up a notch better than the first half some of the football we were watching in the second half was Spain at their brilliant best at times Portugal were punch drunk they really were but I said right at the start I fancied Spain if they were on it and they were nearly on it. But this Portugal team have something about them. Whatever he has instilled in them, the belief, the character, <laughs> obviously Ronaldo yeah. in that type of form, a sensational second half in particular. So, Richie, is that the, the debate or the worry about, you know, a divided Spanish team? Is that all done now? No, Forget it. that debate's going to run for the whole tournament. Every day, everything they do, but I think what they show tonight, the rights and wrongs of the decision and the behaviour and the impact, We'll all be trying to work out that for the rest of the tournament. But what Spain showed tonight was what we always knew. They can play a level of football that few, if any, other countries can reach. There was a spell, I think, 10 minutes before the end, and I was sitting there just looking back. This is a, a local rival, huge occasion. All the hassle of the last few days, they were 3-2 up. How many sides would just, you know, keep it tight, just clear the ball, just to focus on defence? They were just bullying... Portugal just with the ball, just teasing, probing away, all wanted the ball. Every player in every position, didn't matter how congested the space were, how many men were close to them. It, 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 was, it was the highest standard of football you can see. It was superb. Um, and I'm really pleased that we haven't seen, we may see it later on in the tournament, but signs that the Spain squad have been over impacted by the manager leaving and we don't get to see that kind of football. I was delighted that we got to see what we knew Spain were capable of producing. OK, let's look at all the action in the second half. And look, we'll go back to the first half as well. But th there's so much to enjoy here. And we'll start, Richie, with, with the equalising goal. Diego Costa, 10 minutes into the second half. Yeah, again, you think of Spain's strengths. It's all the intricate passing, the movement, the, the making the most of tightest spaces. But here again, an unlikely source of their second goal. Coke and Silva over the ball. Back stick, free kick. Really well headed by Busquets and then Costa does what, what every player in his position do. He's just in the right position, expecting the ball, hoping the ball to fall where it did and finishes the goal. So we knew at that point, OK, right, we, we, we have a hell of a game in our hands. Mm. And, and that feeling continued, what, three minutes later? Nacho making up for the, the error in the first half and what, what a brilliant goal this was. You, you are not going to see a sweeter strike such a pure strike of a football. He backs up play really well. That's off okay. He's playing right back. He's on the far side in a narrow position, not high, wide, around the periphery of play. Again, it's that intricate play that we've spoke time and time again ago. They hunt, they get it back. It's a little bit of fortune here as it comes out. But he backs it up well. And what a strike that was. And talk about redemption. This is the best angle. The whip, the curl, cuts across it. Patricio no chance in the Portuguese sticks. And they deserved it at time. They were well on top, dominant. And I'd already mentioned, at times, Portugal were punch drunk. They didn't know how to deal with this type of play. Um, but they clearly needed that, that extra goal. What a strike it was. And then you go 
Well, very the only near way to... out for Portugal, Dara, then was Ronaldo, wasn't it? They had yeah. to they, somehow. You just knew that if they gave him a chance or got him the ball, that he was going to. And, he and was going to deliver. He, he won the free kick as well with the he foul did, by PK. And PK would be saying to himself, "Did I really need to?" He had plenty of Spanish players. Look, you have loads of Spanish players in and around the ball. Did he really need to do that? And then you go, "Okay, I've given a free kick away, but it's Ronaldo." And uh, you just tell from the concentration on his face. Like they put Busquets and PK on the end of the wall, the two tallest players in the Spanish team, to try and stop that ball from getting round it, but he still did it. And it's right in the top corner. De Gea, no chance whatsoever. And what a finish to the match. And, you know, he is just a phenomenon. I. I said it when he when yeah. PK gave the free kick away. I said he's going to score this. There was three just, shouts to be fair. Yeah. One was wall, one was crowd, and the other was goal. No, the other one <laughs> said goal. Then. Yeah, yeah, but you can just tell from the concentration. Mm. He loves to he loves the limelight. He loves to be in that position. Give me the ball. I'm going to stick this in the net. Because other people, you know, you and and why he can be divisive at times. You know, the the faces he pulls, the kind of. He annoys people, Keith, that time. Some people, that they see him looking at the screen all the time. But just that sense of drama, mm. that, that moment that he is able to That's seize against their greatest rivals. That's what he cried. I would fall into that camp. He would annoy me at right. times very much. So we've seen an instant in the second half when maybe 3-2 down and he's, he's wanting the yellow card. And I think that's what makes people, if they are divided, if they're on the fence between him and Messi, that's what sways you towards Lionel Messi. But he craves opportunities, situations, just like that. He lives for it. That is what the dedication goes into 24 yeah. hours a day because he is a specimen of an athlete and his dedication every single year of his professional mm -hmm. career has got him to these moments. And I don't know, I'm sure you know, we're aware of all these records that he breaks and you know, the one goal, Richie, in each of his past three World Cups and then there was another thing I heard today, oh, he hasn't scored a goal from a free kick in a major tournament. And then at that moment, in that stadium, he, he just comes up with the most amazing free kick. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how he sits down and ranks his personal favourite moments of his career. There's been so many highlights, but scoring a hat-trick like that in those conditions against Spain for mm. his country in a World Cup final, his fourth World Cup final, particularly in the back of the previous three and how they went, and he wasn't fully fit in previous tournaments, and all of that. Um, it was a privilege sitting here watching this match. We were, I know I made a comment earlier, this afternoon was tough watching. Tonight was football at its best. If the World Cup produces anything like this again for the rest of the month, we're in for a treat. But it had everything. His, his like the lads are saying, he, he, there are some players that for whatever talent they have, sometimes the pressure gets them, sometimes the big stage gets them. He seems to be the opposite. The bigger the stage, the more comfortable he is. He's clearly, obviously, his head is wrecked by this £18 million pound fine. He was, was, <laughs> clearly, his head was all over was the shop tonight. Yeah. The, the threat of jail or whatever. He's, he's, he's a phenomenon as an athlete. Like Some people in his age, you look and go, well, he's, he's, he, he's at the twilight of his career. But because of his work rate, like you see his physique, the, the, the way he looks after himself, like he's got plenty of time left mm. if he wants to keep he looked, going. He looked sharp tonight, yeah, he didn't did, he? Yeah. He looked right from the very off. He looked sharp on the counter attack. He was bringing people into it. Um, he, he just looked so concentrated. Compared to what we saw two years ago in the European Championship, I think he was injured and he just limped yeah. his way through it there. Yeah, and he actually started the whole thing off this evening with the penalty, Liam, after yeah. four minutes, one yeah. and. Scored it. He just loves the he, lo he just loves the pressure of it all. Some players don't, but he just loves the pressure of it all. This is him linking up again. You know, so it's, he, he's 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 fooled Nacho. He's fooled him to make him go in, and uh, you know that's a player, as Keith said, who knows him inside out. But he's still done him, and uh, it was a great penalty. It was unsavable, wasn't it? You know, right in the corner at pace. He loves it, doesn't he? he loves pressure. Um, another player who sort of divides opinion, Keith, and I, I suppose, I don't know, he's probably the sort of player you'd want to have on your team than play against him, but it's Diego Costa, and we'll see, here's the equaliser after 24 minutes. Well, this is what he brings to the equations. This is something very, very different that Spain haven't always had. For, for many years it's been David Villa up front, but once he gets into these scenarios, he is such a handful. The way he manoeuvres the ball, chops it one side to the other, Let's be frank, he hasn't had his best season. He was, he was obviously not eligible to play until January. Not at his sharp, his goals haven't been frequent. Mm. But what a weapon he is to have in your armoury. 
we go back to Ronaldo and, and the De Gea blunder. Now, some very clever people in our uh, office have, have found a clip of De Gea conceding an almost identical goal for Manchester United against Sunderland in the League Cup semi-final in 2014. Phil Bardsley scored it. But it, it was a moment, you know, I suppose, look, Carius in the Champions League final crumbles after something similar. Well, that was more bizarre, but a, a blunder. Yeah, again, it was fr frustrating again for Spain because, like you said, you, they... They did well to find a mistake similar to this, had to go back four years yeah. to find it, but you wouldn't expect a, a goalkeeper of a reasonable standard, let alone a top standard, by him to do that at all. So Ronaldo was fortunate on that occasion to, to get the break of the ball the way he did. Like he wasn't unsided, was he? Oh. Yeah, didn't take it, any no, sort of nothing. deflection, the ball didn't there was move. No spin, there was nothing. Just One of those poor, things. Well, just poor goalkeeping, Darry. He didn't get his body behind, total body behind that ball. Mm. Let's chuck uh, Jordi Alba into that as well, let's not forget. He, okay. You want your defenders to do absolutely I everything. You mentioned the free the kick. Way, uh, Keith, because he thought, well, that's, that's not going to trouble my goalkeeper. Yeah, but it's, I don't Ronaldo, it's Ronaldo, though. Yeah. Free pop on goal. We, you mentioned about the wall doing everything they could to stop the free kick. Jordi Alba's getting out of the way. Bizarre. Yeah, he did, he Does, did, he did move out defend. of the way. I thought mm. he was getting out of the way because he didn't want a deflection on the, on the shot, but there you go. Mm. Um, it, it wouldn't be right to finish talking about a game like this uh, on, a, on a blunder, let's say, with, with uh, David De Gea. So let's look at, at some of this incredible football from Spain during the second well, half. Well, we, we can all talk about it, uh, Dara, but it really was, you know, vintage Spain. It was a master class. Uh, just keeping the ball and you know that's uh, Ramos look at that inch perfect out to Nacho and they were superb and they made they made chances with the with with the moves as well look this starts get themselves into a bit of trouble Ramos out to PK watch what Nacho does here the right back this is coming to him whoop I'm away and now they're out and they're playing Great ball from him, switches play. They've got such vision, such football intelligence in all of their players. Um, the only thing that they didn't do right tonight was their tackling on the edge of the box or in the box. They very nearly scored there after a wonderful move. But there's some team to watch, aren't they? Yeah, and that diagonal that we've seen on a couple of occasions, they brought that in a little bit, I think, more so than in recent years. They recognised teams pressing on one side of the pitch and with both of the centre-halves that they possessed, They've obviously got the quality to hit that. Mm. Yeah, what a night that was.